wanted to discuss what Jim Cramer has been going after every single day for the last week. His seven dragons that j Powell must slay for the market to recover. Now, we're going to go over these one by one, and I want your feedback down below on what you think of all these things. I, uh, I, I kind of find it ironic that Jim Cramer, who is the biggest cheerleader of stocks, was cheering all this stimulus money back in 2020, and now he's complaining that, oh my God, we did too much, let's crash it all. Uh, it, it just, it's, it's funny to me how much of a stooge this guy is, but let's go over what his checklist is and let's discuss them one by one. All right. So first off housing, he says, I think mortgage rates must go to seven or 8% before it's just too expensive. And the new homes start coming down in price. Powell has a lot of wood to chop to get rates that high, but he must do so. Okay. So um yesterday we got the number right a 16 percent miss uh new home sales were 591,000 749,000 was the expected the last one was 763,000 zero hedge is like cheering this on because this is what they live for the recession is here now this is one tweet that i found uh Interesting because look in January 2021 the 30 year mortgage rate was 2.65 percent and the average new home price in the U.S. was 401,700. Today the 30 year mortgage rate is 5.25 percent and the average new home price is 570,300. Assuming a 20 percent down payment, that's a 95 percent increase in the monthly payment from 1294 to 2519. This is a huge jump, okay? And that's why you're seeing that decline. Uh, I, I don't see how raising the cost of people buying their first starter home is the solution to our problem, okay? The real problem we have is multifold, and I'm gonna show you. So first off, Canada just banned foreign home buyers in Canada as affordability fears heat up, okay? This was right here, May 6th, and this is a big thing for me here because, you know, being in Miami, uh, you look around at all the major markets in the country, whether it's Los Angeles or New York or even Houston, where I'm originally from, Houston's now uh, full of wealthy Mexicans coming in from Mexico and buying up all our best real estate, right? In Miami, you've got all these rich Russians, you've got all these rich South Americans, and you have all this foreign money, and these people are just buying investments. They're not buying anything right they're they're just trying to get money out of their country and they're parking it in the u.s and it's making it unaffordable for the rest of us to live in these great cities all right and i say great cities loosely i mean i mean they're they're the major markets where we all need to live for work okay and so our biggest problem right now i would say starts with foreign home buyers you have so much money that like it's just like the stock market right the feds pulling pulling money out of the market through qt what happens if we pull foreign investment money out of the country here in the u.s real estate prices would plunge they would plunge you you go you, you come right here to miami right all these homes that you're seeing that are like 5 10 15 20 million those aren't Americans. They're, they're, they're just, they're not. I know some of the biggest brokers here in Miami. It's all corrupt foreign money. And I say that, I mean it, corrupt money. I mean, you're talking, these are oligarchs in these other countries who've picked up their wealth through pretty nasty means in many cases. And they're bringing it here. They're bringing it here. One of my neighbors here at my condo, uh, you could probably find who he is through Google, this guy fleeced Ecuador out of like a billion dollars, right? There's another guy here with this huge car collection, and he fleeced Venezuela out of a billion dollars. This is crazy talk, okay? This is crazy how we allow all these people here. We allow all these people here, and uh, they're, they're picking up all our assets. So I, I think Canada is making a great move doing this, and I'd like to see the U.S. do this first before raising interest rates on regular Americans trying to pay for a home. OK, the next thing is Airbnb. Airbnb is a cancer to society. OK, just like Facebook. Yes, it's it's nice to have alternatives. OK, but look at this. This doctor here said the whole block I grew up on 
in New Orleans is literally half Airbnbs. A plantation economy in 20,000 dots. So you look at a city like New Orleans and they had a crisis. They, they have a crisis of affordability. Their mayor says, hey guys, we cannot get regular people into homes. Well, guess what? All the homes are being bought by investors who are just turning around and renting them, right? They used all that cheap money that the Fed allowed for years to finance all these homes, and now we have a crisis. So this is why I, I, I'm just I'm shocked at how many people think the Fed is going to solve our inflation issues. The Fed caused these inflation issues. Why did we have such low interest rates for so long on housing? The Fed, the Fed, they're they're just like the COVID experts. You know, I've said that before. The Fed are like the COVID experts. Being academics doesn't make you qualified to make rational decisions. There is no reason we should have allowed home prices to get where they are today, right? You look uh, a decade ago, a new home was 288000 Now it's almost $600,000. That's because of the Fed. The Fed caused that. And so I have no confidence in them to quell inflation when they caused it okay they they caused it in everything we're seeing now the next thing here on kramer's list is autos powell has to choke demand for cars and the best way to do that is to raise interest rates we need a glut of cars to solve this intractable problem then the semiconductor makers can catch their breath okay well we come here and global car sales to fall spooked by russian invasion china shutdown this was you know a week ago may 17th and we come down we say car said global sales in 2022 will fall to 67.6 million from last year's 71.3 million uh sales were thought to have bottomed out in 2020 at 68.6 million after diving from 79.9 million in 2019 so okay car sales have plunged i mean they've plunged they're down 12 million dollars from 2019 but that's not the issue okay the issue is the car dealers have learned that, hey, we don't need to stock 300 cars in inventory, okay? And as someone who loves cars and knows a lot of people in the car business, I can tell you, you can go to any car dealership you want today and they just don't have inventory anymore. And it's on purpose, okay? Because they've learned that if they suppress inventory, you have to pay over sticker. That's just the world we're in. Go today, even the most mediocre car imaginable, they want over sticker. Uh, I, I was helping a friend of mine get a car for his wife, and he didn't even want anything fancy. He wanted a Mercedes GLA, which is like, you know, a mid $40,000 car, which is the average price of a car today, by the way, in the United States, like $47,000. And uh, I called a friend of mine, and we went over there, and we looked at the car, and the car... That they make thousands of these. I mean, probably a hundred thousand of these a year. They wanted ten thousand dollars over the sticker when in 2019 they would have had 50 of these cars sitting around and you would have been able to negotiate off. But now, because there were only three in stock, there's no negotiating. So the the car problem, what Jim Cramer is saying is raising rates, that's not gonna change anything. Okay, people finance a payment, and if you haven't noticed these car makers watch a commercial they're now financing out to 84 96 months they're ahead of that right so they know that okay people can't afford to finance a fifty thousand dollar car for uh you know 60 months anymore let's just extend the payment another two three years and it's working i mean it's not slowing down anything and i think jim kramer's wrong on this part another issue is turo so here is a kid who is on uh, YouTube. His name is The Financial Wolf. And uh, he, he discusses how he's got a little Turo fleet making $180,000 a year. And Turo is the Airbnb of cars. So just like everything else, you have all these entrepreneurs gobbling up all these cars, right? Not even fancy cars, just regular cars. And they're renting them out to undercut... The rental car companies. Have you guys rented a car recently? I just paid $300 a day for a Suburban. That is absurd, but that's where we are, right? I mean, that's where we are in society. You can't uh, get a rental car for a reasonable price, so Turo comes around, and then you have all these guys like this, kids even, 
picking up rental cars and making a lot of money with it. So that's making the supply issue even worse. Now, the next thing Kramer has here is labor. The more companies that decide they can't afford to hire people here, the less we need to worry about wage price spiral. So we've had a lot of tech cuts already, okay? I mean, a lot of them. Tech companies are slowing hiring, announcing layoffs. We saw Netflix laid off, I don't know, 150. We saw Snapchat pull back. Facebook said, hey, we're going to freeze hiring. They're doing what the Fed wants, right? They want people unemployed. Isn't, isn't that crazy to say? They want people to lose their jobs. And I posted that video of Jim Cramer on my Twitter where he's begging for mass layoffs so prices don't go up anymore. So they're getting their wish in regards to labor. I, I don't think it's right. I think, you know, we should be cheering that we have one of the lowest unemployments of all time. I think people can pay for goods with their inflated wages. But Jim Cramer, he wants people to lose their jobs so people don't have to keep raising prices and uh, paying workers more. That, that, that's not my, my idea of what, what should work. Now, the next one's Russia's invasion, okay? So this has caused a lot of issues, okay? Ukraine says grain exports down more than 60% to 2021. This was a couple days ago. Ukraine is the second largest exporter of wheat. Uh, it's a catastrophe what's going on there in terms of demand. So we look at something like wheat prices right here. Well, this is corn. Oh, no, this is wheat. Okay, so wheat, as you can see, it was all the way down here at 8 bucks. It's up over 50% right now since Russia invaded. That's a problem, okay? Most of the underdeveloped world needs wheat. I mean, these poor countries, they eat you know, bread a lot. And a lot of countries subsidize bread for the poor people who can't afford it. And it's causing a major issue. I think this week we saw that the, the world has something like 10 weeks left of wheat, I believe. And India is now not allowing it to be exported. That's not helping with this. And China has, I don't know, something like 70% of all the grains in the world just stored. So China, right, they're always playing chess, not checkers. And they were prepared for this. And we were not. So this is a major, major problem going forward. Uh, you look at things like corn. OK, corn started its run late last year. But look at corn. It's up 60 percent from September. Uh, these are this is a 59 year chart of corn. Uh, if you look at the last 20 years, corn looks like this is a breakout right here. This is just a technical breakout. So corn is back to 2010 levels, but it's just adding to this inflation issue that we're having where all these commodities are just ripping day after day and it's putting pressure on everyone the next thing kramer has his concerns about are freight costs now this is one that makes me laugh because i have said many times we need to go back to drilling okay america believe it or not right here December 6, 2018, U.S. becomes a net oil exporter for the first time in 75 years, okay? And I know people have their different things to say about Donald Trump. I'm, I'm not trying to be political. I, I don't really care about that stuff. But Donald Trump branded it as energy independence, all right? And we go over there and we look at what the price of oil was then. And it's a fraction of where we are today. We're at $111 a barrel today. And when Donald Trump made us energy independent, it hurt all the worst countries in the world. Venezuela, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Russia. High oil prices, high oil prices. I'm sorry, bulls, if you're listening. They benefit literally the worst people on earth. Okay? You can say what you want, you know, about the oil bulls, that's fine. They're, they're good people. I'm talking about countries, regimes, right? When oil is high, nobody good wins. Maduro wins in Venezuela, right? He destroyed his country. Uh, you know, the Ayatollah wins in Iran. Horrible person. Uh, MBS wins in Saudi Arabia, right? What a horrible person. He, he's, you know, executed so many innocent people and, you know, women are oppressed there. I mean, these are the absolute worst countries. And to 
think that, you know, high oil benefits anyone is it's a joke. It's a joke. So, yes, this is a big part of why we are in trouble today, because let's take a look. President Biden. With one keystroke canceled the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, this was right when he came into office. I, I don't see a date on here, but like literally one of the first things he did was he canceled the Keystone XL. And that was supposed to bring oil from Canada, and it was supposed to help us. It was really supposed to help uh, alleviate the pressure at the pump and keep low prices. Because, look, low oil prices correlate to everything, right? Transport costs are lower. Uh, you know, the grocery stores don't have to raise prices. Because, look, grocery stores operate at such razor-thin margins. They can't deal with higher freight costs and higher food costs and not raise prices. They they don't have those margins. Have you looked at like an earnings report from Kroger? These companies have low single digit margins. It's it's a horrible horrible business. Uh, so that's why I'm actually very bullish on Amazon's you know just walk out technology because getting rid of the cashiers and a lot of workers that's the only way you can make grocery like a somewhat moderate business. Okay, so yeah, Joe Biden has not been very friendly to the oil industry. And now he's groveling to them. Hey, guys, why aren't you investing more? And it's because, look, they don't know what the climate's going to be in two years, right? I mean, they've been attacked for years and years and years by this administration. And they have no desire to invest more capital when the minute oil goes down, they're going to start attacking them again. So this is, this is a bigger deal than people talk about oil prices, okay? And so now we're begging Venezuela and Iran to help us, which is so ironic because we we had sanctions on Iran for the longest time. And now, you know, after the war, we're talking here, this was in March 20, we're saying, hey, Iran, please, please, please help us. Let's get prices down, right? Why do we want to enrich Iran? If they, if they get money, right, they have like literally ruined the Middle East. I mean, a lot of you don't know the politics there, but... You know, in Lebanon, they funded the, the Hezbollah separatists, which are, you know, a terror organization. They've upended the government there. They've ruined a great Christian country. And they use the Hezbollah fighters to attack Israel. This is a horrible country, Iran. And so with Iran, when you're talking about this regime, okay, not Iran's not a horrible country. The regime running Iran is a horrible country. I mean, is, is a horrible regime. These people, okay... They're trying to build nuclear weapons right now. What happens when they have nuclear weapons? They don't like Saudi Arabia. They don't like Israel. And they're right next to both of them. That That's a disaster in waiting. And so we lifted sanctions on Iran and are now asking them to be our friends and uh, help us out with the oil prices. Just ridiculous. The next thing is freight costs. Now, this is one a lot of you may not know about, but pre-COVID, it costs four thousand dollars to ship a container from China to the U.S. All right, uh, last August it exceeded twenty thousand dollars for the first time ever. And you go down here, you could see um, actually in July, I believe last year, right here, yeah, it was eleven thousand on July twenty seventh. So freight costs are soaring. Uh, has a lot to do with a lot of things: the price of fuel. Uh, they can't find workers to run these ships. Uh, China's ports are closed. I mean, there, there's so many things going wrong in the supply chain world right now that uh, these prices went up a lot, but they're starting to fall back now. They're starting to decline today. And uh, this is something that's going to help a little bit, but I don't think we'll ever go back to the $4,000 pre-COVID rates. Uh, you know, they're just like the used car dealerships, right? They've learned that if you limit supply, if you limit how many ships are going out, uh, you, can, you can control the pricing. Now, the last two things Jim Cramer wants to see crushed are airfares and the consumer savings glut. Airfares, if you notice, we're, we're not doing any more flying than we did three years ago. I, I don't know what this guy's talking about. All right, you, you look, you can see by date and where we were three years ago. Uh, we're still not back to where we were in 2019, right? 2.3 million, 2.5. Uh, 
Uh, some days we are over. It's probably because like this is a weekend and this wasn't. But the bottom line is we're we're not even back to where we were. Okay, you can go across this all the way. We're at 2.2 million here on 516, 2.6 million 20. Why wasn't this an issue in 2019? What is Jim Cramer talking about? People have been stuck at home and they're ha happy to go traveling. That's not a bad thing. You want consumers to get out, don't you? I mean, there's so many jobs at stake with these airlines. It's just, I hate how Jim Cramer thinks we have to stop spending money and people need to lose their jobs for everyone to be happy. It's just, it, it, what a horrible way to think about things, right? And he's a horrible person anyway. Like, I, I don't want to get into it, but Jim Cramer is a terrible human being. But anyways, what I'm saying is, his idea that airfares need to go up so people fly less, we're already flying less than we were two, three years ago. So I, I don't know what he wants there. And here he says, people need to get to spend their pandemic savings so that they are motivated to go back to work, according to the host. He makes it sound right. All these guys on TV make it sound like everyone's just uh, a former worker who quit to be a day trader using Robin Hood. That, that is not the case at all. We have one of the lowest unemployment rates ever okay u.s jobless claims fall to the lowest level since 1969 as states float rebate checks um the reason these small businesses can't find workers and i'll tell you because i, I made a huge push with my dad that he was really unhappy about you know I, like i've told you in other videos we have a huge chain of convenience stores we have a lot of workers and um my dad has them split up under different LLCs, and he, he wasn't opposed to uh, giving everyone... He, he didn't want to give everyone health care after Obamacare became a thing. I, I think it was like 50 employees, and that's just the way it is in small businesses. You, you don't give workers benefits. You know, like If you want benefits, you go work at like a Starbucks, a Costco, whatever. And I made this huge push with him. I said, hey, man, we got to give these people benefits. I know it's going to cost you a lot. But we have to do it. I mean, it's uh, it's just a necessary thing. You make enough money. And uh, he did it. And now, I mean, he pays something like an extra, like, I want to say 30000 40000 a month. It's, it's a big hit. Believe me, it's a huge, huge hit. But you know what? He, he did it. And now we can hire easier. But the problem is the majority of small businesses don't offer benefits. And so... When employees want jobs, there's so many out there that offer all these benefits that small businesses can't compete. You're, you're talking about Amazon, Costco. These companies are paying like $25 an hour uh, for warehouse workers, giving them benefits, right? Giving them all this like, you know, uh, pregnancy benefits, uh, all, all kinds of things that you would just not get at a small business. And so the issue small businesses are having is... Look, people have options today, and you want to blame someone? Blame the health insurance companies. Health insurance is a disaster in the United States, and it's there needs to be a way for small businesses to offer health insurance for an affordable number to their employees, and then the hiring issues for small businesses will slow down, okay? It's just right now, uh, little mom-and-pop businesses cannot hire and offer benefits that the larger employers are offering. And the larger employers are just hiring everyone that they can. And that's what the pandemic did. Everybody was like preparing for war and Amazon overhired and Starbucks overhired and they both admitted it recently and they're letting workers go. And so now those workers need to get back out there, but they're so used to the good benefits from those companies that they can't go back and work at these little small businesses that don't offer it. And it's a shame because it's putting a bind on everybody. It's it's putting, I, I know so many small business owners, uh, family, friends, whatever. And yeah, they're all struggling with the same issue. I can't get anybody to come to work. And it's just a problem. It's a problem, but blame the government. Don't blame inflation. It's uh, the government and their red tape on all these insurance companies has made it unbelievably uh, expensive to do so. So, uh, all in all, I think Jim Cramer's a little misguided. Okay. He wants to literally crash everything. He wants to crash housing, crash autos, whatever. Those aren't the problems. Okay. The problems are still oil prices are high. Supply chains are broken. If you fix both of those, all this other stuff will fix itself. The housing issue, like I said, 
That's not something we can fix at this point. You guys gave us low interest rates for a decade. What did, what did you think was going to happen at the end, right? Even now, as we hike interest rates, all those people that are financed at low rates, they might not sell their home. They're locked in for the next 30 years. So anything the government gets involved in gets ruined, whether it's student loans, whatever it is. Anything the government gets involved in, it becomes a disaster. That is all... That's why we need less government, not more. This isn't a Republican or Democrat thing. Both parties are pretty awful at uh, shrinking the size of government. We just need less government. That's the bottom line. And the free market will take care of itself. If we let the free market take care of itself during COVID, we wouldn't be in this pickle we're in today. So that's my rant. Uh, hopefully we can get this stuff under control because they're, they're destroying the wealth of so many people today. And it's just, it's sad to see. It really is. I have so many of my friends, uh, you know, working in, in, in various investment uh, fields. They're just devastated. It, it doesn't matter if they're in private equity. It doesn't matter if they're in venture capital. Everyone in the investment world has been rocked over the last six months. And uh, they weren't all wrong, okay? We, we had been groomed for a decade to invest in growth and growth at all costs. Now, in six months, they pivoted to, no, that doesn't work anymore. That This was a coordinated hit from the Fed to just destroy wealth, destroy morale, and that was their intent to cool inflation. And it probably is working right now. It probably is working. I can't imagine consumer sentiment uh, is high enough to where people are spending egregiously like they were uh, a couple years ago. So... We'll see what happens going forward, but I think Jim Cramer's list of seven things is just crazy. That's all. I, th I think it's just a crazy thing to fix inflation. Just get oil prices down. Inflation will fix itself. Anyways, have a great day, guys. We'll talk later.